Yay! So a lot of you guys have been asking me, what do I do? I really want to start the next year off strong with that sense of career direction. What is it that these successful people do who seem like they always have a plan, they always know where they're going, and they're getting all of those opportunities? How can I be like that? So I'm going to share with you something I've noticed over the years that they do, which really sets them apart from the other professionals who are working really hard but still floundering in terms of their direction and, uh, and not really getting anything that special or great. Uh, if you guys don't know me, my name is Dahlia and I help professionals switch from jobs which are unfulfilling to also highly paid positions but which they can also love and where they can make an impact on the world. So here's the thing. Um, all of you guys, like if you're watching this, you are a driven professional, you are someone who's hardworking, and you're someone who wants to make an impact. But I see two categories of people, and I see people who tend to uh, you know, want to make that impact and want to do something great, but keep getting just stuck, feeling like they're not fulfilling their potential. So they know they have this great potential, they know that they're they could be doing something really amazing that's both fulfilling and well paid and just giving them the life experience that they want, but they're not getting it. And then I see other people, um, you know, who have it all together, who are getting what they want. They're super happy with their careers. They're always doing these cool things. I have a client who uh, she had a work trip to the Bahamas um, this past year and just, you know, just cool things happen to them and they're doing interesting things. And one of the biggest differences I see between those two types of people is the way that they see themselves. So if you're thinking about your career direction for the next year, you're trying to figure out those next steps. The first thing you really need to focus on is what is your story and how can you be a main character in your story? Because something that I see a lot of um, people who flounder, for lack of a better word, do, is that they have trouble seeing themselves as the primary character of their story, if that makes sense. So they're always allowing themselves to be like a secondary character in someone else's story. And that's where it's just like what they say, where if you don't have a plan, you're gonna fall into someone else's plan. And then obviously that's where a lot of people are kind of unhappy because they've just fallen into someone else's plan. So they're supporting someone else's dreams, someone else's company they're building, or um, someone else's thing. Not to say that you shouldn't work for a company, obviously, uh, but if it doesn't feel like it's an alignment to your own goals and your own story, then yes, you will feel like you're, you're just doing things for others and supporting someone else's dream and that you're not in alignment with your own dream. So it's really, really important to think about what's unique about my story. What's the thing that only I can do in this world? And, and to really allow yourself, uh, and some people I, I think are afraid to do this because they think it's egotistical, but it's not, to really see yourself as the main character. Like, what is it that only you can bring to the table? In what story are you the hero of that story doing something really unique that nobody else can do? And the great thing is that there can be many main characters of many different stories. And, um, you know, some of you say, well, not everyone can be a main character. So how does that work? Well, number one, even if even if that's true, if not everyone can be a main character, don't you want to be one of the ones who is a main character and not just be a supporting character? Why would you want to just be the supporting character? Um, you know, at least make sure you are one of the, the main characters. However, I actually believe that it is possible for everyone to be a main character, for everyone to be on mission, for everyone to be making an impact, to have money and have fulfillment. I do believe that that is a choice and, and not just luck. So I actually believe that that's possible for everyone. It's just that a lot of people don't know how to do that. And so they, um, you know, they don't get that. But regardless, you get to choose if you want to be a main character or a kind of secondary or even less than secondary character. And you can really design your life so that you are the hero of your own story. You're having the adventures that you want to have. You're giving back in the way that you want to give back. You're having the experiences that you want to have. Uh, someone was I was talking to someone the other day about statistics and he was reading a book where they they mentioned that 
we like if you're watching this right now you're probably in the top three percent of the world so what are we doing kind of standing back going oh well i can't do this i can't do that i have to pay bills i have to you know worry about this oh i need to please my boss and i need you know all these things you are in the top three percent of the world if you are not going to take advantage of those opportunities and really focus on getting the life you want making that impact that you want who is going to do it like you have all of the opportunities you have all these things on your side it's just a decision to really craft that story craft that life that you want and that career that you want and when it comes to figuring out that direction it all starts with what just ask yourself that question what is my story what is unique about uh, about me and what it is that i want to do i'll give you an example so i had a client called laura and she um you know, she started off confused, no idea what, what direction she wanted to take her career in. She just knew she needed the change, but no idea about what kind of a change. And when it came down to asking herself these quest, uh, this question, and obviously she, she went through the questioning sequence that I have to get her to that clarity. But at the end of it, it, took, it only took about 10 days or so. By the end of it, she realized that she wanted to be a project manager for a women's empowerment type of company. And there are a couple of other details there that were important to her as well. But essentially, she'd been working on um, on film sets where there were very few women and the women who were there were not necessarily treated in the best of ways. So that, along with some other factors, made her realize that her mission was to empower women. And then, of course, she wanted to be in a creative company and other things based on her background. But your background and just your unique drives, the unique things that, that you enjoy, all of that combined together is going to create your mission in the world and your story. And you're going to be able to actually position yourself as the kind of hero of that story, as a main character where, yes, you will go through challenges, of course, but you're going to have really good things come your way. It's like another client I'm working with right now. I am so, so proud of her. She just wrote to me saying she got... Um, she got an interview at this place where she'd already applied 10 times and never gotten a response. And now they're ready to interview her. Uh, she's also been invited to, uh, to be a lecturer at another, another place that previously had rejected her. And so a lot of people, what happens when they get these rejections or when things don't work out the way they want, they go, well, I guess it's just not meant to be. I guess it's not, just not happening for me and I just have to be a secondary character. I just have to do whatever it is I can get. But if you decide, no, I am a primary character. I am someone who is, I'm designing my life. I'm not just taking whatever I can get. I'm designing it. And then you really, really do what it takes. You really look at your approach and go, okay, the first 10 applications didn't work out. What can I do differently this time? Uh, that's where you can finally get to where you want to go. So that is what I wanted to share with you today. I hope that makes sense. Let me know below and let me know what kind of a career direction you are thinking about. And if you want, I also have some career roadmap session slots left for this week. This is a one-on-one -on -one session where we get on a call together and we look directly at what it is that you want to do, what's been holding you back, what are the kind of challenges that you need to overcome, and then step by step, what, what do you need to do to actually shift some of those things. So for example, the client I have where she'd done the 10 applications, none of them, none of them worked, um, or I talk to people as well who they get on these calls and they're like, oh, I'm not really happy, but I don't know what I want. By the end of that call, a lot of the time they've figured out exactly what they need to do to actually find that career direction. So send me a message and we can arrange one of those calls. If it's a good fit, they are free, but if they're really for successful professionals who want to get to the next level in their careers, or they're looking for a kind of a career change and they really want to figure out where to go and they don't want to waste any time doing it. So let me know if you're interested in a career roadmap session and we'll chat about that. Otherwise, let me know below what are your goals for um, the end of this year and what are the, what's the kind of career direction you're looking to take. All right, guys, talk to you soon.